So, all the rage with the kids today, oh, that was horrible, is cutting the cord. Pretty much every media company, financial report, whatever you want to call it, is mentioning cutting the cord. Most people are cutting the cord using streaming services. Uh, there are a lot of options. Uh, the quality is high. Um, it's great, but pretty much every one of those streaming options, either you have to watch ads or you have to pay a subscription. Now, we're all very used to ads at this point, but many of us are trying to get away from them. I actually was one of the first purchasers of the first available PVR, as we call them in Canada, or DVR, as you might be more familiar with, uh, recorders in as it became available. It was available from Bell Express View with their satellite service. It was the reason I switched to their satellite service from regular cable. It was fantastic. The, the, the liberation from commercials was something I never wanted to leave, and I never have. Um, I continue to this day. I actually still have that satellite service. I've upgraded to the newer PVRs. I watch a lot less regular TV than I used to. I do have a YouTube subscription for premium so that I don't have ads there. It works great. But what many people don't realize is there's another way of getting TV, and it's um, through rabbit ears over the air. A lot of people will laugh at that. A lot of people might not have that option. But for those who do, that's another option. Obviously, broadcast TV has a lot of commercials. So how do you get around that? Well, if you just hook up an antenna to a TV, you're back in my personal stone age. Uh, no way to skip commercials. There are uh, set-top boxes that have PVR capabilities, so you can record that way, and they work fine. But I wanted something a little more central. So there are these boxes available. They connect to your network. You connect a hard drive to them, or they have internal storage. And they give you the ability to build your own PVR, basically, with over-the-air uh, TV signals. I've been aware of uh, these boxes for a while. I've always wanted to try them. They've always been expensive. But by expensive, too expensive to play around with. I noticed a few people online recommending this particular one, Tableau it's called. And I looked at its price, and it was cheaper. But not that much. It was about 220 uh, Canadian dollars. Not really cheap enough for me to go for it. But then I saw that these guys were offering some refurbs for 169 And I jumped on that. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm willing to try it out. Worst case, I'll, you know, sell it on eBay if I don't like it. Unfortunately, that might be the way I go. But we'll get into that. <laughs> so, um... What is it? It is basically a TV tuner that you connect to your network, and through an app on your phone, you can watch TV. That's it. Um, I've already been using this, so I've already done the unboxing, so it's not a surprise to me. But basically, this is the unit here. It comes with a power adapter, an uh, Ethernet cable, I think. Price says on the box. And the unit. This particular model is a dual tuner. So if you look at the back, it only has one connector for an antenna, which is fine. Internally, it has dual tuners, so it can tune two TV stations at once. A reset button, a USB port. These are available with storage included. I believe they just have some flash on board, but those are more expensive. I'm like, why? I, I've got like tons of old hard drives in USB enclosures sitting around the house. I'll just use one of those. I want to try a USB stick. I did not have good experience with that. I recommend an actual hard drive. So be it. Um, it is wireless. It is Wi-Fi as well. So you can use Wi-Fi, but again, I experienced some problems. My Wi-Fi network's pretty darn solid. I've spent a lot of time and effort to make it so. And I was having trouble with this device staying on the network or be, it would just disappear from the app and I'd have to reinstall. I don't know. So I hardwired it. Um, so it has an Ethernet jack. Once I hardwired it, a lot of my problems, not all of them, disappeared. And that's the power connector. So with that said, 
Okay, so I'm going to give a demo of the Tableau app. Now, we'll see if it does it. As you can see, everything takes... Okay, here's connecting. That's actually a good step. Usually it acts, asks me to find the Tableau on my network. Um, and it worked. Great. Okay, so I couldn't show you that bug. That's okay. Anyways, so here is the main app for Tableau. Uh, you have a lot of options here. Um, if I go to live TV, these are all the stations that I can catch from where I have my antenna and what the Tableau has detected. So actually, let me show you that. So we'll skip ahead a second. So if we go into settings, there is an option to scan. So let's see what we get this time. Um, my antenna is not in the most perfect of locations, um, which means I don't get all the channels that I could. And... I'm rather far away from certain transmitters, so I don't usually get them. But this, the, the stations that will appear right now, around oh, eight of them, should be is pretty consistent. So let's see what we get here. Yeah, okay, this is pretty typical. Now, I will admit the scan is is rather quick. This is compared to like regular TVs or other devices I've used. The channel scan feature is very quick on the Tableau. I'm I'm impressed by that. Uh, its consistency is my problem. Okay, so it found you know a bunch of channels. Uh, the, the the green dots indicate signal strength, but of course they don't give you any real number. Which why why not just give me the number if I want? I want to know how many dBm I'm at. But fine. If you get anything less than the five greens, the Tableau will not enable that channel by default. But you can manually enable it. So I can't show you that right now, but. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like, okay? And as you can see, there are channels here that are not fully green, and they're available, but you have to click um, the little checkbox to actually add them to the guide. So, so that's a channel scan. So going back to live TV, so these are the channels available. Now, here's uh, one of my first critiques. Of, of this service. So I'm on the 30-day trial of the subscription. That gives you a bunch of features, commercial skip, seven-day guide. I don't know how many days, whatever. But here's the frustrating bit. They support Canada. Great. Surprised. Fantastic. But they don't seem to populate channels that are not Canadian, which makes no sense. Many Can Well, the vast majority of the Canadian public lives within a very short drive of the, the U.S. border. That means a good portion of the Canadian public who might be interested in using this device can catch stations from the U.S. Now, what you're seeing here is WNED, WNED and Fox 29 in Buffalo. Those two are American stations. They are across Lake Ontario from where I'm located. So I don't normally get them. But when RF conditions are right, nearing, you know, um, later in the evening or at night, uh, skip can occur, and I actually do get these stations. They do work, and I've done a scan at one point where I got these stations. But notice there's no guide information for those stations. Why? Why, why aren't you populating the American stations? That's annoying. Why? There, there's no reason. What we're seeing here is the 3-1, so that the channel 3 is flashing red. And what that means is one of the, uh, there are two receivers in this, uh, in this particular Tableau box. And one of them is being used to view that station. And the reason for that is you can see the little orange clock thingy. That indicates that there's a timer, um, time recording happening. So if, if I click on that station, I'll be able to watch that recording. So here it is. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is streaming to me in the live um, option or in the recorded option. I'm not quite sure. It, I'll get into that what that means later. But there's one recording on one station. So if I choose another station, I should be able... I should be able to watch it. Let's see. Okay, that actually works this time, which well, is great. Record, now, there. why I'm a little hesitant is because, and now notice that both the 5-1 and the 3-1 stations are blinking red, which means they are currently receiving, being received by one of the tuners in the Tableau box. If I try to choose another one, let's see what happens. I should be able to do this. There's only one tuner. Yes, and it works this time. Okay, so... What's a little bit frustrating is yesterday I had a power outage, which meant my Tableau box got reset, which meant I couldn't show you a bug I found. And that is after a certain amount of time of the Tableau being up, it simply decides that the two stations you've watched are it. 
If you try to choose another station, it'll simply give you this warning or error. Why? I don't know. Hardware problem? Software problem? Not sure. Frustrating. Only solution I've come up with is to reboot the, the bloody box. Like, why? Okay. Anyways, getting back to the app. I, ignoring the basic functional problems, this app is very good. Um, you know, if you click primetime, these are all the shows that are, that are going to be on. You can click on any of them. And it will show you, okay, well, that show is, well, that's a bad example. There's only one. Let's let's show, let's show choose a show that's on a lot. Uh, yeah, Big Bang. It's going to be on like crazy. Uh, yeah, so at least there's, there's 12 episodes available to record. Um, you can go by season. It lists all of them. You can choose one by one. You can choose to record all episodes of this show, which I've done. There's a green check mark. Or you can record new episodes, whatever. Very cool. Very, very cool. There are other categories, so there's TV shows. Here are here are the all all the TV shows that are available. Um, you know, premiering. You can choose genres. So if you want agriculture, okay, the Green Week, yeah, sure. Uh, animals, you know. Oh wow, that's kind of funny. They they include cartoons as animals. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and you can choose by channel. So uh, you know, if you want to see all the shows that the CBC is running, uh, global, whatever. Very cool. They list movies. Um, so these are all the movies that you, you that are available. And if you click on one, you can record it. Uh, this one will be Monday, August 3rd at 2 p.m. on Channel 25. So very cool. Sports. Normally this isn't too packed right now because of what's going on, but it's, it's going to pick up now. Uh, baseball. Let's see. What Blue Jays? Oh, cool. I can watch two Blue Jays episodes or uh, games episodes. Oh dear. What channel would that be on? On channel 40 at 1 to 4. So that's very cool. Uh, what I like about this is it does give you the, the option, and this is especially important for, for sports, to you know have the recording go longer than, than the actual scheduled recording, because games can go long, right? Uh, three hours for a baseball game is typical, Sometimes it's more. Scheduled. Here are all the shows that I have set to schedule. And it lists conflicts, if there were any, which there aren't. I'm not recording that many. Recordings. Here's everything I've recorded. So I can select Bold and the Beautiful. And, oh, my secret is out. I was watching some of this. But here we go. So, you know, here it is. Now, here I can demonstrate a feature of this, which is only available under subscription, but it's very cool. You see these yellow bars here? Those are commercial breaks. So if I go near one, so let's see if I can get there. And when the show breaks for commercial, you'll see what happens. And you can see the distortions there. I'll talk about that later. Bang. <clears throat> it skipped them all. So that is very cool. You don't have to manually skip uh, commercials. Very, very cool. I love that. Now, here's a critique. Here are all my wonderful recordings. They're located on the hard drive I have plugged into this box. How do I download, right? I can delete recordings. I can protect. I can mark watched. I can, you know, I can delete all the recordings, the options. I can adjust the timer. Where, where's the option to download this episode to my phone? There's none. That's frustrating. Why? Why? I know why, because they want you to subscribe, because subscribing gives you the remote access option, which is great, except for the fact that what if I don't have internet when I'm on the road? What if I'm commuting and I don't want to use mobile data to watch this stuff? Why can't I just download it to my phone? Why? Stupid. Bad. Just, just moronic. Bad. Okay, so with that rant over, sorry, a lot of rants. In the settings, uh, this is the ma major stuff. So you can see here I have, um, you know, my guide data and other services. You can see that I have a hard drive connected. It's 160 gigs. I can rename the Tableau. So these, this section here, recording quality and live TV quality, what that is, is it sets up what the Tableau does with incoming video and outgoing video. So recording quality, that's the quality of video it records to your hard drive. The only limit here really is hard drive space. Hard drive space is cheap. You can use the cheapest spinning rust platter um, device you have 
So set it to maximum. Why wouldn't you? I don't know. But the, they, the default is low. Uh, for live TV quality, they have it set by default to 720p, 3 megabit per second. Decent. On this phone, watching it with my phone, it's okay. I'm particularly sensitive to video compression artifacts, so I, I can see it. It, it. it gets a little annoying sometimes. If you're using this on a big screen, this is dreadful. Like, the motion artifacts are horrible. There's, it's just bad. I don't even know why they bother. It, it's, it's dreadful. So, you know, you can bump this up. But what I have found is that you bump it up and it starts getting a little unreliable. So maybe that's why it's recommended, because it's the only one that really works well. I don't know. You can enable surround sound. Great if you have a, you know, if you're using a Chromecast or something. You can enable the LED. I love that. I hate... This thing has a super bright blue LED. The fact that I can disable it is great. Commercial skip detection, that is what... Um, it's a subscription feature, and it's those little yellow bars. That is great. Remote access, this is what allows you to access your tablet remotely. It's okay. Again, you're going to be using a lot of bandwidth. You know, 3 megabit per second or more. I don't even know. So here's a question. You know, your recording quality is 10 megabit per second HD 1080. I, I don't... 72660. I don't know what exactly that means. But what happens when you record when you're watching or pre-recorded? Does it stream at this 723 megabit or does it stream at this 10 megabit? And if so, when you're remote, does it stream at 10 megabit? That's well, that's my full upload bandwidth on my current connection. So, oh dear. Okay. Um, these are the channels uh, I showed you this before, where you can. Yeah, it's a, a little bit of a GUI issue in my mind here. Edit channel lineup is where the rescan option is. Why not just put rescan here. Uh, I don't know. Bad. Whatever. Um, you can see here that most OTA channels on their primary uh, channel spots are in 1080i or 720p. Secondary channels tend to be 480. Uh, I don't know if that's guaranteed, but it's common. Some other options don't record duplicates, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the app. I'm relatively happy with the app other than the bugs. Now, Here's one bug that drives me just batty, and one reason, you've probably been yelling at me this whole time, why aren't you doing this in landscape? Well, this is why I'm not doing this in landscape. Why is there this large blue live TV bar here, right? All of a sudden my channel selection is really just like, it's three channels at a time. Why? Why is this here? Why? Why? I don't need the time displayed. I know what the time is. Fine, have that little menu bar at the top, but, but why? Stupid. Um, if I go into like these options, that that's pretty much the same. You know, that's okay if I click on one of them. It's just it's clearly not designed for landscape um, uh, orientation. That this app landscape was a secondary secondary thought. It really was um, frustrating. Um, if I go into settings, you know, it's the same thing. It's like they've made it all super wide. I'm like, why? Why do you have to do it this way? It's just, it's not designed that way. Um, frustrating. Okay? I don't know. That's all I can say about it. But it, it does work. So, now, to get, to get back to some of the issues. Now, something you were seeing in some of my recordings, and I'll show you, you know, I've taken some screenshots, is the problem... I don't know if this is a an app problem or hardware problem. I'm not sure, but the quality of the TV tuner in this these tableau this tableau is not great. My TV connected to the same antenna catches the same number of stations, sometimes more, but usually the same, but never has any artifacting. Yet the tableau does. Here's an example. This is what it. I see this all the time on recordings where I get these you know standard ATSC type low signal things, but yet the signal shows perfect. So for example, here was a rescan I did. No real difference. Antenna didn't change. TV still shows the exact same channel availability, but all of a sudden a lot of the channels are now red and yellow. Why? I, I don't know. Okay. If I power cycle the Tableau, they're back. Okay. Fine. Now, yeah, uh, you might be able to tell. I'm a little 
frustrated by that. So if I try to open up the Tableau again, let's see if the other bugs. So another bug that is common, which it probably won't do right now, um, is it, it just loses the Tableau and I have to reconnect to it. And it starts up so slowly. Like this, okay, it is actually connecting this time, but this is just, why? Why does it take so long to connect to something on my network? Okay. Now, it does support casting to a Chromecast. Okay, the, the little button is here. And that works. <clears throat> but the problem is, if I leave it playing, which when you're watching TV, that's what you generally do. On live TV, if you Chromecast, it will work for 11 minutes. After 11 minutes, it just stops playing. If I pick up the Tableau app and try to control, control is lost. If I kill the app, start it up again, it starts playing local on the phone, like the Chromecast connection is gone. Is this a Tableau app problem? Is this a Chromecast problem? I don't know. I use Chromecast all the time, a lot. It's not really that complicated a thing. Yet, I don't know, it just, it does not work well. So, yeah, I, I can't stand the landscape orientation, just the wasted space. It's just, why? <clears throat> now, to get into some of the things. So, I have um, a physical hard drive connected to this. I tried a USB drive, and it usually worked, but sometimes didn't. I don't know why. It was a 32 gig stick. I wasn't running out of space or anything like that. So my recommendation to you is you have to use a hard drive, okay? Which isn't too bad. Warning though, the Tableau does not supply enough power for a USB powered hard drive. So you need a USB powered, you, use, you need a hard drive, a USB hard drive that is independently powered. Why? Why couldn't they have just put more power on that USB port? Why? I don't know. They didn't. Everything, like, it, there's so much potential here. But it seems like it, they just missed in so many ways. Like, these little details that, you know, they have this beautiful, you know, this. Like, it, it, it looks great. It works great. I wish the update were a little faster. But it's fine. You know, this is great. Really, what, you know, they spent so much time making this perfect. Like, I really don't have much complaint about about selecting things to watch. But then why can't I download things? Why is it only available through streaming? I don't know. Um, maybe there's a legal thing. I don't care. You know, it's a box sitting in my home. It's the same as, a you know, if you remember a VCR. Like, why? Why restrict it like this? Um, okay, so that's about all I have with this. Okay, so hopefully I've shown you how this device works. Um, I've shown you some of the problems I've had. I'll, you know, I, I'll leave my review. This is my personal opinion. Now, I have to admit, is the hardware faulty? Potentially. It would explain the poor TV reception on this compared to other TVs, other devices. I even tried an inline amplifier. I tried it at the antenna end, and it made things worse, which honestly didn't make much sense, but so be it. I tried it at the unit, and it made things better sometimes. Other times it made things worse. Um, my thoughts are it was potentially simply saturating the input stage of this device. Anyways, I haven't had good chance with inline amplifiers in the past, so I wasn't too surprised, but I'm always disappointed. Anyways, so poor signal reception compared to other options is a problem. If you have a good antenna, if you have strong signal, probably not a problem. But fundamentally, my biggest problems are if you leave this thing running for too long, it starts getting buggy. Um, it doesn't allow you to view new channels for some reason. It, it gives you that warning that I showed, that error. Uh, recordings look great, but every once in a while you get ATSC for, um, corruption. And uh, I know many of you were thinking, well, maybe your hard drive was bad or whatever. I tried a USB stick, which I got working sometimes, and then it just stopped being detected for some reason. It did. It exhibited the same problems. I tried a different hard drive in a different enclosure, exactly the same problem. So could that be hardware problem? 
Maybe. Could it be signal strength related? No, I don't think so. My Again, my TVs and everything have no problem. I think it's just this thing. Every once in a while, it's it just it gets worse. Why? I don't know. The app itself is relatively stable. I've seen it crash a couple times, and honestly, in the world of Android, that's not that unusual. It's disappointing. It really feels beta level. Uh, I won't call it alpha. I'll call it beta. Um, it has a good feature set, but some of those features are buggy. It is not designed for landscape. That's dumb because this is the perfect big screen thing, and I, I don't get it. I guess if you're using a smart TV that supports Tableau, it solves that problem, maybe? I don't know, but using it with a phone, horrible. Just horrible. Live streaming or uh, viewing things remotely works great as long as you don't go too high on the uh, bandwidth, uh, then problems start appearing locally on your network. If you're remote, you need a good internet connection to go that high can't download programs that you've recorded why stupid dumb okay just i'm whatever commercial skip works great it's a great feature you do have to pay for it along with the guide so if you do not pay for the subscription which is rather reasonable i forgot the price it's like six or seven dollars a month it's not bad you get a one-day guide. You can record what you want, but I think you lose all the show stuff, so you have to manually set recordings, probably. I don't know. My subscription trial has not ended yet. You lose remote access, which, again, uh, I guess maybe that's why they limit you from downloading, so you have to buy remote access, which is stupid because you don't want to use all your bandwidth, your phone bandwidth, to stream these things when it works. Um... What I did do, actually, as, as, as a way around this, is I, I have a VPN on my phone to my home network, and that worked great. So that's how I was able to test things uh, without actually enabling remote access. Would I recommend this unit? No. No, unfortunately, no. Um, there are too many fundamental, basic problems with this unit that just make it frustrating to use. It, if you are perfectly happy <clears throat> to only watch recorded content, you'll probably be okay. Probably be okay. And that's the irony, because that's generally how I watch stuff. But every once in a while, I want to watch something live, say, sports. I don't like recording sports, because things get spoiled. Will it work? Maybe. If it feels like it. Which, that's no good. Like, really? No, I, that's no good. So, would I recommend it? No. If you find one of these for cheap, maybe give it a try. Make sure you can return it if it doesn't work. If you have any other questions or comments or suggestions, please let me know. I really appreciate it. I've had a few great suggestions from some uh, viewers, and uh, it prompted some new videos. So uh, thank you for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Everybody, stay safe. Until next time.